Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about Motion Array. If you're not familiar with Motion Array, it is a subscription site where you can get access to stock B-roll, royalty-free music, and most exciting Final Cut plugins for one flat monthly rate. I'm a long time happy customer of Motion Array, but I will tell you when it comes to the plugins, I would say they're not the highest quality plugins all the time, in my opinion. Here's a side-by-side -side for you of what you can expect to get from an FX factory plugin with all this customization in the inspector window. And then on the Motion Array side, you can see there's not always a ton of customization on these plugins, but they are a great value. If you're interested in checking it out, I do have a link below in the description box. If you use that link, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help support my channel. So I can keep making these videos. I am a long time user of Motion Array. This video is not sponsored, by the way. I really do use Motion Array. Often when I'm working on a project and I wanna give it a little sizzle, I rely on Motion Array for like great dynamic text effects, overlays, accent graphics. When I don't wanna like create something custom, I head on over to Motion Array and see what's new in there and it almost always saves the day. But that is not what we're talking about today. Sometimes I'm in Motion Array and I'm like, what are these plugins like and what would you use these for? And I'm always curious about them. So today I'm gonna to share with you five of the weirdest, most interesting, coolest, most unique, whatever you wanna say about them, plugins on Motion Array. I'm gonna be putting them to the test and seeing if I can figure out how to make them work in my world with the kind of things that I edit and show you how they work. Let's just dive right into it. All right, this first one is called 3D Photo Animator and it says that it can take your 2D photos and turn them into 3D. Let's put this one to the test. So the way the 3D photo animator works is it's in your generator. So we're gonna head on over to generators and we get 3D photo animator here and there's two different kinds. There's the one where you might be doing something landscape. And there's also this really cool face one. We're gonna do both of them today because I think these look really, really cool. So let's, I don't know, use the zoom out. We're gonna drop it into our timeline. I'm going to click on it here to bring it up in my inspector window. Let's hit this generator button and we see we've got some drop zones. I'm gonna go back to my bin here so I can access this photo that we're gonna be using today. I'm just gonna select on the drop zone and then select this landscape photo in my bin and hit this apply clip. The other thing we have to do is fill this other drop zone. In addition to like the plugin with the 3D photo animator, it also gives you this folder of different mask overlays. So for this particular one, I chose floor three because this is like a horizontal landscape photo. So I'm going to select this drop zone and drop in floor three, apply clip. So now that we've got floor three in here, I'm gonna select this editing mode button. And what we wanna do is place the horizontal gradiated line of floor three, kind of where the tops of these mountains are. So I'm gonna scale this up and try to get like the white part of the gradient over that mountain. I'm gonna click out of editing mode. Let's see if what that did. All right, here's the problems I'm seeing with this. We're getting repetitions on these like lines of snow. Let me bring up the original photo. So yeah, we see there's like stripes of snow, but when you look at the one in our timeline, look at this like repetition here. I don't think it's doing that great of a job. I think in a, maybe with a photo with a more like simplistic texture, this might work okay, but it's like clear as day, there's something kind of off about this photo. If you wanted to achieve this effect, I do have a whole tutorial on that that I will link to here. It's something I did in Apple Motion and that you can make photos look 3D in Apple Motion and it is much more labor intensive than this plugin, but I think it works a lot better. The other feature that comes with the same plugin is a facial feature. It makes a face look 3D. Let's work on that now. We're gonna go back to generators. Here we are in 3D photo animator. Each of these generators has a slightly different motion. Let's just go with the first one here. And again, I need to drop my face into the drop zone. Let's head back over to our browser window. I'm going to select this first drop zone, put in this woman's face. 
apply clip. And again, this drop zone here, we're gonna put this front facing face. This is again, something that came with the plugin in a separate folder. I'm gonna hit apply clip and then let's jump into editing mode by clicking this button. And the goal is to line up the shape of this face with her face. So I'm going to reposition the nose right over her nose. And then I'm gonna scale on the X value to get the width right. And I'm gonna scale on the Y value to get the height right. I'm gonna turn off editing mode. All right, I'm playing it back. I actually think this worked pretty well. Um, I am noticing at the very beginning and very end of the clip that I'm seeing kind of that duplication effect, obviously very clearly here on her left side of her face, our right. And again, on our screen left and her right side of her face, you do see that duplication effect. But here in the middle of this clip, which is a 10 second long clip, it looks pretty good. So if you wanted to edit with this, let me show you. If I extend this generator, it's just going to extend the length of time that we're running into that that duplication problem. So in this case, what I would do if I really wanted to just get the sweet spot on this generator is I would select it, hit option G to make it a compound clip. And then I can trim off that messiness at the beginning and end. And then you're just left with the best parts of this. Pretty cool. So on this plugin for the like photo landscape editor, I'm going to say I'm not a big fan of this. There's better ways to do it. But for this face one, I give this a thumbs up. I think it's very cool. I do think you're probably getting a little distortion in her facial features. But if you didn't know her, you probably wouldn't notice. I'm sure if she saw this, she would be like, what are you doing to my face? I look different. But I, I think, you know, in normal context, this is a very cool plugin and a very cool effect. Thank you, Motion Array, for this one. Okay, the next plugin we're gonna look at is called Crystal Clear. It actually comes with titles, transitions, and effects. We're gonna be checking all of those out today. It's a pretty cool looking effect, but sometimes things look really great in the demo. Can you really use them in real life and make them look just as great? Let's try it out. Let's first start with this text. I am going to head on over to titles and here's our crystal clear text. I'm just gonna drop it over this shot. And that is what the crystal text looks like. Obviously you can change the font, you can change the size and position and you can have it build in or out. Let's check out another one here. That's pretty cool. I don't know, I think these titles, a lot of them are, are pretty neat looking. All right, let's head on over to the effects. Now to really use these crystal clear effects, you're gonna wanna stack two shots, one on top of another. And in this case, let's do a split right effect. So you can see what this does. Our second shot comes in and builds out and we can adjust the placement of the second B-roll shot by changing this position here. I would say this motion's a little herky-jerky. Does anyone else see that? I think it could be smoother. And one thing I do know about this plugin is that if I shrink down the duration, let's say of this top clip, you lose the build in and build out effect. Unfortunately, you have to have longer shots for this to work. Okay. See, it just pops out, which is a little unfortunate if you were trying to do a faster edit. You can see that it works so much better with a longer shot. So you really need shots that are significantly longer to really make these plugins work. Um, they do come in from different angles here. You can go top down, you can come in from the bottom, the left, the right, and you can adjust the border and the shadow and make some other adjustments here, which is nice. For me, the only gripe is that you have to have long clips on this one. Let's look at the third part of the crystal clear plug-in pack, which are these transitions here. I'm gonna transition between these two shots. Here are all of the crystal clear transitions. There are a lot of them in here. I'm just gonna throw in a few just to see what they do. This first one is descriptively called C. It's kind of interesting. I don't think it really fits well with this project. And if I select it here in my 
storyline and head on up to the inspector window, you can see what I mean where there's really no adjustments to be made on this transition. So that's when, when I'm talking about, you know, in motion array, the plugins don't always have as much adjustment capability. This is exactly what I mean. I can't change the color of this teal. I'm sort of stuck with it unless I open this up in motion and maybe try to change it there. Let's go to this one, circle. That one's a little more neutral. There's no real colors in there. So for the crystal clear pack, what I like about it is how much you get. And I think in certain circumstances, if you had very long shots and you wanted to do some inserts of more detailed shots on top of a more broad wide shot, I think those effects are pretty cool. The text effects are kind of neat and interesting as well. The transitions, hmm, I'm kind of on the fence about them. Um, but you know, again, flat rate with motion array. I'm not mad at it. I'll probably hang on to this plug and I think it's pretty cool. All right, this next one is called Magic Bling and you can see it adds sparkles and like a lot of zhuzh to your videos. Let's see if it works as well in real life though. So here we've got this model on this bench with this fancy purse and I'm going to add the Magic Bling filter and see if we can add some sparkle to her fashion. So I'm just going to select this first one here. Magic bling one seems like the right place to start. So I can see what it's done is it's taken all of the, the whites in my frame and blown them out and added some sort of ray. I'm just going to adjust these sliders here and see what I can do. If I adjust the exposure way up, you can see those sparkles that that's the effect we are after. However, I mean, she's disappeared. It, it looks just too overexposed and cartoonish. Let's try this next shot here because we do have some metallic elements on this bag. Maybe we'll have better luck. I mean, I do think that's a little improvement. We're really getting those star effects we're after, but you're also, you know, really stylizing everything else, her skin, her dress. I'm not crazy about that, at least not for this shot here. Let's try something totally different. I'm going to drop in this concert shot. You can see the shot has a lot of lights and the lead singer's shirt has a lot of sparkle. And I think maybe this is the perfect situation for that magic bling. What do you guys think? I'm going to throw it on here again. And again, when those bright lights hit her, her skin is just on fire. I'm just gonna scrub through slow. Okay, so you can see here though, look at her shirt. I mean, it really is working well. Look at the drum set here, it's working really great. There are moments in here where I do think, oh yeah, look here, we're getting the great sparkle effect that we want. I think the problem with this plugin is that it's like too sensitive. It's picking up colors we don't want it to pick up. Now, in this particular circumstance with this particular shot, I don't mind it being a little more stylized because it's like a concert and it's kind of fun. And you're kind of adding these interesting effects to it. So I think you could get away with it here, but I don't think this plugin is, is as advertised on the Motion Array site. I don't think it's as great or as useful as you or I would hope that it was. Um, but you know, in certain circumstances, you know, they're throwing up that confetti in the demo video, maybe in that circumstance, it works great, but I can't see a lot of applications for this. Unfortunately, great idea, but execution, mm, not amazing. Let's take a look at this next one here called pro magnifier. This is one of those that I was just like, wow, this is, this is unique and different and interesting. And I can only see myself using it in a very specific circumstance, kind of the way they do in the demo, where if they have a map or something like that, you really want to highlight something. I think the pro magnifier looks interesting. Let's just try it and see how it works. So I'm going to take this drone shot. And I think what I'm going to attempt to do is to track this silver car here, which is right now dead center of our screen and like highlight it with the magnifier. I don't know. I don't know when I'd ever need to do this, but let's give it a whirl. I'm going to drop the pro magnifier onto my clip and I'm going to reposition the ball around my car and let's like shrink down the scale. Okay. And I'm going to keyframe this. So I'm going to keyframe the position and the size. Oh, look, you can like dim out the background. Maybe I'll do that just, just a hair and you can add a drop shadow as well. All right. Now I'm going to attempt 
to keyframe this so it follows our car. And I'm going to raise the magnifier size a little bit as our car gets closer to us. Guys, while I'm doing this keyframe action, if you're enjoying this review of these Motion Ray plugins, let me know by giving me that thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button, and ringing the notification bell so you never miss one of my future uploads. All right, so let's check out my finished result. I mean, I think this is kind of interesting. Like I said, I think you need this in a very specific situation, not something I would personally reach for a lot. So this might not stay in my motion templates folders, but I don't know, it was kind of worth a try. I thought it was interesting. And now for our last motion array plugin, it's this one here called Zoom Effects, which gives this kind of interesting zoom pop on your video clips. I'm really curious about this one, so let's try it out. We've got this drone shot here of this amphitheater we're gonna use as our test clip. And here in the Zoom Effects bin, we've got a lot of different effects here. Zoom Effect in one, in two, in three, out one, out two, and out three. I'm not really sure what to expect with these. Let's just pick the second one, I don't know. I'm gonna drop it here on my clip and let's see what the default action is. That was weird, I feel like it zoomed out. It kind of did the exact opposite of what I expected it to do. And it gives you a lot of distortion, wow. Look at what's happening to this sidewalk. This sidewalk actually in real life curves the exact opposite way. It curves toward us, not away from us. What if we do one of the out ones? That was kind of neat. I do kind of think that that effect is a little bit interesting. Um, I like the way it pops in and really zooms in on that amphitheater. I will say if I turn off that effect, look at how much though it crops in on your shot. So you need to be trying to focus on something pretty far off in the distance for this to work. I wonder what would happen if we selected a totally different type of shot. Like let's drop in these two girls here and see what happens. I think they're gonna to be too close to the camera for this to work. Yeah, look, we're getting so much distortion on this. It really just doesn't work with this type of shot. Look at how zoomed in and cropped it is. And I can't, even with this slider, that's not what the slider does. I can't zoom out. And even if I scale down my clip in the inspector window, it really has, this plugin really has cropped everything off. So I definitely can't use it with a shot like this. So yeah, if we go back and look at the zoom effects demo video with fresh eyes, I can see that they are applying this plugin to very wide shots. Like we had success with, with this amphitheater shot, but doesn't work well for most of the shots that I would personally be capturing. But so what I had fun trying this plugin. In fact, I had fun trying on all of these plugins on motion array and I love it because there's really no risk. You can download it. If you don't like it, you can just delete it. And so for that reason, I do love Motion Array. You guys, thank you so much for creating with me today. I hope you had fun. I will see you next time.